Howdy, folks. I'm your host, Joggy Carolyn, and welcome to Titus Entertainment. Oh boy, do I have an awesomely awesome treat for you. Now, this is more of a treat for me than it is for you, but we're going to play this game of tomato tomato. All right, a couple of weeks ago, and by a couple of weeks ago, I mean a couple months ago at this point in time, dude, do you know our fabulous girl, Pesky Life, I stumbled across one of my all-time favorite childhood artists. And as I was having nostalgic childhood vibes, I was clipping through their videos, watching them while drawing. I had an idea. Boing. Why don't I ask them if they want to collab? Of course I had two thoughts. Two thoughts like any other human would be would have in this situation. Either A, yeah dude, let's totes collab. Or B being, <laughs> no, just no. With butterflies in my stomach, I sent the message, I waited not even a day and bam. I was ecstatic. They had said yes. So then the conversation started. And as we're having our conversation, it's going back and forth of like, what are we going to do? What's the idea we're going to have? And upon us jumping back and forth, they said, hey, let's create a mood board character design. <laughs> With that being said, the conversation had begun. It's a beautiful face. There we go. <laughs> I'm a natural flirt. I do apologize about that. That's all good. Okay. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. collab with our mood boards. This is what they had sent me. The first things I noticed was this fabulous dress right here, the shimmer, the wings, this beautiful view, the mushroom, 
and you know, of course it's kidding. So my ideas started fluctuating and I was wondering, hmm, what should I do? Look, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I am just like super surprised with how this all came out. Originally, I really wanted to push for a more animal-like creature going for an enchanted vibe. Taking the cat into account, I went for a more like blue cat vibe, maybe a blue cat furball, until I made myself see Sonic. Oh, our good old boy Sonic, the freaking hedgehog. As soon as I saw Sonic inside the character, which you probably don't even think it looks like it, but I did, I was like, nope, uh, scratch that, scratch that, delete, 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 delete. Started fooling around and tried to get a more, mm, I guess, bulbous alien head-like vibe going on. So I pushed and I pulled and, I mean, I just took and went back and forth for it. It wasn't working. I know I played with that gesture for quite a bit working on this and then I started playing with a, I guess, mermaid vibe because I was going to do like a long flowy skirt mermaid, but I still was not happy with that. So I jumped back into the alien idea and started playing with it again. And you don't see it on this screen, but I have my sketchbook inside and the sketchbook had a whole bunch more concepts of her and I still did not like those concepts of turning her an alien. It wasn't the mood board that fabulous alien the box had given me. I have to make this perfect or at least decent for my eyes and your eyes. It wasn't working. I said, scratch that. Nope. We went another route. Starting on a fresh new sketch, I was like, mm, what am I going to do? The fact of the matter is I knew what I wanted. I had an idea, but the point of the idea was trying to find it, figure out a way to bring it out without ruining this character. And I'm going to tell you now, if you keep on prying for something, it's not going to come out. It, it just doesn't. Prying and trying to work as hard as you can makes our block happen. So I did what any other human being would do, and I took a break. After about three or five days or so, I came back at this character design with a fresh attitude, a new desire, and a passion and a hunger to conquer this challenge. The main things I saw in the character board was the dress, the bow, the makeup, and the cat. Which you're going to find out later on what happens to the cat. And this character wasn't turning out any way that I really, really wanted it to go, and that was starting to make me feel crippled and anxious and oh so upset and mad. I just like to pause real quick and just say something, just say something real fast, is I'm not a very good natural reader when it comes to reading scripts off paper, and I have this huge long script right in front of me, and I feel like I am talking like I'm talking to child inside of a kid's TV show or it, it just feels like I'm a robot reading this and I am sorry I am so sorry this is how it's happening I apologize for that small little rant playing with the sketches I went sketch 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 I was having a blast bingo I felt like I finally got it I got the floofiness of the dress I got the flow of the matter going on I thought I got it whimsical and no, just no. I mean, I really liked her design. It just wasn't the vibe I wanted it to be, you know. Basic girl vibe check. This baby ain't basic at all. She's got to be bougie and fabulous. And considering my mood board again, oh boy, with a sad face, I scratched that previous design. I tossed it out the window, but I did save that design. I didn't toss it all the way out the window. I saved that design for future matters. You're not gonna like me when I say this, but I left this drawing again because I got Art Block. <laughs> yeah, yeah our, our favorite girl, Art Block, decided to come creeping, being like, I creep in, I know where you live. Yeah, that's what she did to me. Now, I didn't completely abandon this design for a couple days. I did play with it a little bit, my sketchbook. I, I went back and forth once again. I was just trying to 
let loose the negative energy and release this positive energy and try to figure out how it's going. And one of the ideas that came up in the sketchbook were floopy ears. And these floopy ears were my everything. I got so excited about having like this doe-eyed creature and I wanted to keep the cat essence. So I, I scratched the cat, but I did bring forth maybe like a more deer feel. It's going to sound super funny right now, but one of my main things when I get when I get in love with a character and get to feel them more is when I name them. And while I was having art block, I decided I needed to come up with a name and maybe that would fix everything. So I was listening to some music and I went outside enjoying our lovely weather before it started getting freezing cold and it's super hot. So I mean, weather over here just likes to escalate from being fabulously warm to, oh my goodness, there's snow on the ground for no reason two days later. I named her Joan. Yeah, I named her Joan. After her naming her Joan, I got a lot more attached to her and felt like I just felt so much better. I jumped right back into the whole dress design and the situation. And I knew I wanted a beautiful dress, yet I wanted this beautifully stupid, big, stupid bow. And I couldn't get this bow out of my head. And I was like, what am I going to do with that? So this idea came to my head. Let's rip her wings off and replace them with a bow. So I turned that hot diggity dong beautiful bow into a giant bow and placed that on the back of her wings. Therefore, birth. Joan's backstory. The whole erotic thing about Joan's backstory or the whole erotic thing about me is I do illustrations and write for a younger audience while Joan's backstory is nothing for a younger audience. This definitely gets pretty thriller-ish and horror vibes though in a beautiful manner which I absolutely adore. I mean, I enjoy all sorts of books, all sorts of movies, all sorts of TV shows, and all sorts of categories. And my biggest goal, like maybe you'll see this come true. My biggest goal is to write a book or a comic book for every genre out there, ranging from like baby baby to old senior, just to make everybody happy, to make myself happy and see how far my creative genius can go. That is my longtime goal, and hopefully one day it will come true. Considering I got a pair of fairy wings inside, or not even fairy wings, but got a pair of fairy, I'm doing it again. I got a pair of wings inside the mood board challenge thingamabob. I'm sorry, I'm butchering this. I botched it, yep. I knew, I should have figured that she was going to be a fairy. I should have figured, but I didn't really want to push that, but then after I started liking it, I pushed her more towards the fairy-like vibe. Though I am very grateful she turned out as a fairy. Or she's not even a fairy. This is a pixie. Joan's a pixie. Scratch that. And again, like I said, I didn't mean to get so dark in Joan's backstory. It got pretty gruesome, but it got pretty cool. I definitely have to say right here, it turned out into a fantasy thriller horror. Joan was a part of the Pixie Kingdom, the southern side of the Mirkawakas. A duchess betrothed to the prince. The night of the proposal, everything was swell. Everything was quaint and glorious. The Pixies were enjoying their beautiful night, preparing for a wonderful feast to enjoy, to celebrate two kingdoms joining together. When, crash, they were invaded by fairies. Now, honestly, I can see fairies in more of like a big, dark, monstrous manner, stealing babies, cursing folks, and invading kingdoms, just from my preference and everything that I like to stick my nose into. The queen of the northern fairies had come and abducted thy kingdom. And poor Joan, she just could not stand idly by and watch her people fall to ruins. So she and her betrothed fought the fairies, terminating the ones that sought to destroy them. And once they got closer to the queen and almost at the tip of destroying this wicked beast, the queen initiated a gruesome comeback and slaughtered her betrothed in front of her. 
After watching her betrothed die right in front of her eyes, Joan was dragged off by her by the scalp of her hair into the main ballroom, where the Queen of the Northern Fairies proceeded to bellow out, To all that defy me, to all that go against thy will, I will destroy you, and this will be your punishment. And basically, this fish over here decided to rip off Joan's wings straight from the back, tear them in two like breaking a twig, and proceeds to put the wings on her crown and wear them like a trophy, scaring anybody. After losing everything, Joan was forced into a very gruesome situation where her and all the other pixies by day and night to get out of. Now I know myself personally, I am very excited for the, because I am planning on working on this more and more later on. So you know what, maybe keep an eye out. You might, you might see it in the future on Webtoon or something. It, that would be pretty fun, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? So yeah, my final conclusions. I am very happy that I didn't just make her into some sort of alien mermaid-like creature or maybe Sonic the Hedgehog like it was going to and like I tried doing. This did come out better than what I thought and I'm not going to be down on myself and be like, you know what, you, this turned out gross because I'm actually pretty quaint with how the whole ordeal happened. I do hope in the future that we can do some more stuff like this. This is by far one of my all-time favorite drawings, if not my favorite drawing of the year, which I know I haven't done a lot, but this is definitely one of my all-time favorite ones. And thank you, Alien the Box, for such a wonderful opportunity to even do this and create such a beautiful baby, and you guarantee that I'm going to be having more. Don't be getting any dirty thoughts, you hear me. Without further ado, the reaction with Alien the Box. Hi. What is going on? <laughs> so there's there's gonna be a little tab and there's a little box with a triangle and it's right where the phone hangs up you know where the red button is as soon as you push the screen and it pops up oh gosh. <laughs> Here. don't you beep mr beeper okay see that yes all right so you're gonna push this button right there I'm gonna turn the brightness all the way up for this because I gotta see this bad boy. Yes. All right. Oh gosh, it's oh gosh, it's so bright. <laughs> it is. Wow. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I kind of really want to see how yours turned out first before I show mine. Okay, I'll send it to you on Friday. Okay. Oh, you do? No. No. <laughs> oh! What do you think? Honey, this is gorgeous. Look. Oh, I took literal weeks to get it done because I was like, I must put as much detail as possible into this. Oh, he's so gorgeous. And you got a pink fluffy pen? Are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> wow. Dude, you like got this spot on. I freaking love it. You got a ball around the night. Oh no, oh no, no, no. Oh boy. You, out of one out of like Kabillion, you got the Kabillion going on, honey. Oh hell yeah. There's a stereo in there. There's a freaking stereo in there. <gasps> wow. You are amazing with detail, you know that? Over now.
Thank you. Thank you. So forever. It did. This is freaking gorgeous. Oh yeah, I take pride in all my work. You should. And the color variation in like the butterfly's wings, and the more I'm like zooming in. This took 43 hours to create. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. You can tell there was a lot of work put into this. It was so fun. That's what I noticed when I was doing mine too. I was like, this is the most fun I have had on a drawing in a long time. Me too. And Oh, yeah for everything right <laughs> i know i know you understand but it's absolutely like just this whole challenge was beautiful inside and out and i'm very grateful i got to enjoy it and do it with you i'm so happy that you agreed to do this with me because like we said before no one else would and i'm so happy that you were the one who i got to do it with because it has honestly been a pleasure working with you oh. and like i had so much fun Thank you. It was such a pleasure doing it with you. I had a lot of fun as well. It definitely pushed my poor little brain past its limit. Like, I mean, it took longer for the character design than actually the illustration itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine was opposite. I just whipped out the character design and then the final illustration, I was like, 